Hey guys, we're going to make a video. Let me turn that down. I got my meditation video on and stuff. And we're going to talk about AI and stuff and some things, you know, to be concerned about and stuff, you know, because I know this is, it's, it's part of, you know, what, you know, things that are coming. We're in the judgment time. I've talked to you guys about it. Kali Yuga, always getting weird. <laughs> it's getting weird and stuff. And January 21st, 2024, Pluto goes back into Aquarius. Now I know when it went into Aquarius this year in March, there were some there were some things that happened. A lot of a lot of significant things happened. Uh, we even Trump getting indicted, you know, certain things. The first one, you know, for Stormy and stuff. But there's a lot of stuff that's coming, you know, and I know a lot of people have been talking about AI. And then we got people warning, you know, we got Steve Wozniak even when he, he was with Google for a minute. And he was like telling everybody, we got to stop this, you know, and stuff. There's, there's others, you know, techie guys that are saying, stop it. And then you got Elon Musk is saying, well, let's, let's try to regulate it. Let's, let's, you know, be prepared for some things. But I want to talk about the spiritual implications of some things they're talking about that I had to kind of sit there, you know, as a conscious person and really kind of think about deeply. Okay. And then, then I let my brain expand, so I'll just talk about kind of some things. But I was watching this one video about this guy talking about, the, inevitably, and I know David Icke has been talking about AI. That's everything leading to all of it, okay? He's, he's, I, I, I watch his series, and I know he's been banned on a lot of platforms and things. You know, if anybody knows who he is, look him up if you don't. Okay, he's he's very controversial, but he's on to some things. I'm not saying I agree with everything he says. You know, like when we, they talk about reptiles, I'm like, okay. But I get it. But some people seem like reptiles. Let's put it that way. Okay. But I, I had to think about this uploading, you know, consciousness to the cloud is what they were saying. Okay, what is a cloud? So it's a, a series of network systems like Google has a cloud and you know, Apple has a cloud, you know, there is, but it's, it's basically the internet is basically stripped down. It's the internet, run, you know, the big network system that everything that holds it up and then they're putting AI in it, but they're talking about, they can brain scan us, you know, before we die, upload us to the cloud. And we could live like a fucking avatar on the internet forever. They're, they're talking about achieving immortality by uploading brains to the cloud and stuff. And this is, this is weird. This is fucking weird. And so, so then I had to think about some things, you know, when I just let my mind expand, you know, I try to do that conscious thing. I understand quantum theory, past, present, and future are all running at once. So then I kind of had to sit there and go, what if a, a future self of me, you know, like say, you know, well, AI is coming quick, but let's just, let's just say, Mm, 25 years from now, say uh, 30 years from now, you know, I died, but somebody uploaded my brain to the cloud. So all my past experiences have been an illusion. Okay. And stuff, maybe even the meat suit. And I've, I've been, you know, because a lot of times we talk about, is this all a simulation? Is everything we see even real? Just like, you know, when we talk about consciousness, what really stops my hands going through the arms of these chairs you know it's all atoms but what makes it solid you know stuff like that we play around with that you know when it comes to certain things like philosophy and and, and things and physics even but you know it's like that technically could be a thing you know that somewhere in a future if past present future are all happening at once and somewhere in my future somebody uploaded you know all of us to the cloud Okay, and stuff, and, and we, we still lived at a time in the past where there was no internet, but we got in the future uploaded to the cloud, our consciousness, because they had our videos, they had our voice, they were able, you know, they, they were able to get us in there, okay, and stuff, so, so then my, where are my experiences of whatever, you know, even real, okay, it gets, it gets fucking weird. And then it's like, well, well, how do you get free? You know, and then when we talk about Earth being, you know, not maybe Earth, the, the beautiful planet, but, you know, the prison that is that is run on Earth. We talk, we talk about the dream of the world and the dream of the planet. 
okay, the dream of the planet is a prison, but the dream of the world is different. You know, we want to have some kind of nice consciousness. You can experience beautiful things when you get outside. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, but I, I, I had to let my mind storm like that. Like, yes, well, technically here I've made videos and I, I've used my voice and this, that. And, you know, it, what if somebody sang my shit and uploaded me to the cloud a long time ago? And, you know, oh, shit. And all my experiences weren't real. Okay, that that's kind of, oh, here, hello, Matrix. Okay, so I want to read something that's pretty wild. This is another thing I was looking at. This was published... Um, maybe I should use my glasses or is it better without them? Yeah, that's good. And so, uh, let me rub them out a little bit. And so, so this was uh, posted New York Post, April 10, 2023. So Pluto was in Aquarius at the moment when this was written. Okay, so we got that. And this is, this is important for anybody who's into mediums. Okay, I had to look at this one. And it says, you could upload dead loved ones to your computer by the end of the year tech guru so this makes me wonder um if it's been done yet i i bet a million dollars that there are those that are playing with this right now you may soon be able to catch up with friends and relatives who have passed away on your computer dr pratik desai a silicon valley computer scientist who has found multiple artificial intelligence platforms boldly predicts that human beings consciousness Consciousness is in quotes, okay? Could be uploaded on digital devices by the end of the year. Start any, and, and he says, start regularly recording your parents, elders, and loved ones. He urged Friday in a Twitter thread that's since racked up more than 5.7 million views and tens of thousands of responses. With enough transcript data, new voice synthesis, and video models, there's a 100% chance that they will live with you forever after leaving physical body. D Desai continues, this should be even possible by end of year. Uploading a person's consciousness would involve saving videos, voice recordings, documents, and photos of the person you wish to reimagine on your computer. These compiled assets would then be uploaded into an AI system that would learn as much as it could about the deceased individual. And the ultimate goal for users to create an avatar resembling their loved one before he or she passed so this person could, in a sense, live forever on your screen. Amid rising concerns about the growing global dominance of AI, marked by everything from destructive bot behavior to obsolete jobs, to false criminal accusations, one company called uh, Somnium Space is offering AI-based live forever mode. Literally, and here's a quote, literally, if I die and I have this data collected, people can come, or my kids, and they can come in, and they can have a conversation with my avatar, with my movements, with my voice, founder and CEO, Arthur Schwab told Vice. He added, you will meet the person, and you would maybe for the first 10 minutes while talking to that person you would not know if that's actually ai that's the goal oh my god another company deep brain has developed a program called Rememory that allows users the opportunity to walk down a memorial hall dedicated to a late loved one and even interact with the person through an act actual conversation meanwhile similar freakishly futuristic technology is already being used for celebrities. Deepfakes use AI to manipulate videos and replace the genuine likeness of one person with an impossible to detect imitation often to alarming effect. One AI platform created a digital twin of Bruce Willis who has been diagnosed with aphasia, a brain disorder that affects his ability to communicate to allow the actor's likeness to appear on screen despite his retirement from acting. The Die Hard actor's deepfake has already made its debut in an August 2021 commercial for Megafon, a Russian tele telecommunications company which grafted his face onto Konstantin Solovyev for a commercial for Megafon. Okay, so, and then um, in Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table video series last December, award-winning actresses Jean Smart and Margot Robbie spoke on their concerns about potentially pornographic deepfakes. See, there, it, you know it's going to get weird with that, too. 
itself. I got to be careful with it. Uh, YouTube and all these things and stuff, and it's going to go on Patreon. Yeah, uh, after you're dead, they'll go. Oh, let's put Mar Margot Robbie in that movie a hundred years from now, having her doing God knows what, and your estate will have to sue them. It'll be horrible, Margot Smart seventy one said. At the other end of the intellectual spectrum, many still argue that AI advancements, including Chat and GBT, can be beneficial to humanity. However, a group of tech experts, including Elon Musk, is urging a six-month pause in the training of advanced AI models, arguing the systems could have profound risks to society and humanity. The CEO of Twitter and Tesla joined more than a thousand experts in signing an open letter organized by the nonprofit Future of Life Institute, which is primarily funded by the Musk Foundation, the billionaire's charitable grant organization. The letter calls for an industry-wise pause until proper safety protocols have been developed and vetted by independent experts and details potential risks that advanced AI could poses if not placed under proper oversight. Risks include the spread of propaganda and untruth. Oh God, it's already happening with people. Imagine what they can do with AI. Okay. And that's up. Job losses, the development of non-human minds that might eventually outnumber, outsmart, obsolete, and replace us at the risk of loss of control of our civilization. So there's a lot with that. And then there was another article I found, which was also pretty interesting. And, stuff, and then I'll put together what I'm talking about. Um, another one on uploading consciousness to the cloud. Um, this was, oh God, uh, Days Digital. And stuff, and this was July 13th, 2023, and stuff, where it's talking about it. And it, this is about uploading the mind to the cloud. Okay, and stuff, uploading our minds to a computer to live on after the inevitable death and decay of our physical bodies has long been a fantasy of sci fi films, video games, and TV series. Matter of fact, there is um, a series called Upload that's talking about that right now. Yeah, they're trying to prep us for it. You know, be, be careful what's going on. Okay. And everything. M many people might argue that it should stay away. Like, like it or not, those scientists are hard at work as we speak, conducting research that might one day make digitally assisted eternal life a reality. Some, like computer scientist Ray Kurzweil, believe that humans will be able to upload their entire brains to computers and thus achieve digital immortality as early as 2045. Oh shit, I think it's going to be even sooner. Um, the only thing is the brain, there's so much going on. It, it, you know, you'd be surprised what your brain can do, okay? Unsurprisingly, the concept of handing over a detailed map of your brain to be uploaded to the cloud or live out the rest of your days as a janky avatar in a sad little metaverse, God forbid, it, it says God forbid in there, is quite controversial. Some say the ethical roadblocks are too great. Some say it's physically impossible. I wouldn't say it's totally impossible, but I don't know. Even Elon Musk says it's weird, although it hasn't stopped him seeking ways to store human consciousness with Neuralink to be downloaded into a new human or robot somewhere down the line. But what would it actually mean to transfer your mind from meat space to cyberspace, and how could it be done? The basic idea rests on several assumptions, says Angela Thornton, a researcher at the Horizon Center for Doctoral Training at University of Nottingham, who's also partnered with the Carbon Copies Foundation, a nonprofit that focuses on whole brain emulation and the creation of substrate independent minds. It assumes that we could replicate our brain with a certain level of understanding of how it works, she says. Not necessarily knowing all the detail, but enough to be able to emulate it. Then she adds, we have to make the assumption that the mind, the abstract part of us that thinks, remembers, imagines, and senses, naturally emerges from the structures of the physical brain. I mean, because there is brain and there is mind and there is consciousness, guys, okay? And this is a lot to take in, which is partly the current brain emulation research. It's still stuck at the level of worms and in most advanced studies, mice. And then it kind of goes on that. So let me skip. How would mind uploading actually work? There are two commonly proposed paths to digital immortality, scan and copy, and neural prosthetics. A scan and copy is the most common route, said Thornton. Basically, you scan your brain in detail using something like an electron microscope. 
and from there you try to understand how the pieces fit then you try to model it if you can model it and understand how it works you might be able to emulate or replicate it and so and then of course they've talked about the neural implants and all the monkeys and all that stuff the mind body problem let's say it's possible to create a full emulation of our brain and get it up and running on an external hardware how might we interact with the world as an avatar in a second lifestyle in metaverse as a disembodied brain floating in space or would we move around the real world in a robot shell there's some debate about whether even be able to cope with our existence without any form of interaction with the environment so we're all you know this is obviously one of the big things about being alive is having form having body it's actually a nice thing to fucking have okay it's you know when when we're in you know here and stuff but you know there's you know imagine death to be released <laughs> might be a, a huge fucking blessing okay you know that's the thing and stuff but then there's worst case scenarios you know it says there are positives i don't really see any positives but but there are a huge amount of ethical concerns with any neurotechnology says Thornton, because your brain data is the most intensely personal thing you have yes your thoughts you're uploaded to the cloud anybody people could access you and fuck with you very easily okay the fear is involved with handing your brain data over to a company or government the rest of eternity go without saying ranging from fatal glitches or bankruptcies to mind slavery okay that now they really own your mind you just uploaded it to the fucking cloud you're on the internet forever okay now you really are mind controlled okay and so and so there's all kinds of things you know little mind dystopias and stuff this is this stuff is really being worked on guys this is really really being worked on that they are talking about this is not uh, this stuff that, that is in books and stuff, you know, and I know uh, David Dickey has talked about it's all leading to AI, you know, a lot of stuff. That's the ultimate mind slavery. This is, this is taking your soul. This is taking, this is about taking your soul, you know. So they're talking about like, say you've made videos or voice lists or this or that. They want to take your soul and stick you on the cloud. Okay, this is this is why Jesus need to come. <laughs> okay, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. Oh no, we're gonna have a second Atlantis for this shit. So, but but I did have to speculate. That's why I'm saying, what if we in the future were uploaded the cloud into some of our experiences? This is why shit. You know, a lot of times these old gurus and these old mystics from back in the day and even Jesus's day are like nothing is real. Okay, can you imagine because we got uploaded to the cloud in the future and so our past experiences are all and then what about our past and what the fuck is going on? Okay. Yeah, no, 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 it's crazy. And so so this is yeah, you know, this is the matrix, you know. So definitely, you know, we have as we kind of have our 3D, 5D consciousness thing, this is the thing. We could have a very creepy 3D AI Pluto and Aquarius is what I've been saying. Okay, where it gets all fucking weird and it's ultimate mind slavery. Okay, or you can free your mind and get to 5D consciousness. How do you free your mind? So, what are the things is stuff? I mean, it's like it, it's pretty much probably almost impossible to delete all our stuff off of social media forever. But I will say one thing there is a point we're going to have to pull out of social media. And because of certain things that are going to go on, deep fakes and weird shit and all that stuff. You know, this is all this setup slowly getting, you know, defragmented, getting you kind of used to things, getting you comfortable, boiling the frog, till ultimately the goal is to take your soul. Okay, this is what a lot of us light workers are saying. Okay, we've been saying it for a while. And so just like when I do that little quote by Prince, and so the internet okay battlefield is mind prizes your soul he's like watch out you know when he was up there collected a war watch out guys battlefield is the mind the prize is your soul okay they want so anybody you know of course we don't want to be uploaded to the cloud but then have we got so much data that they could take the voices that and could it actually capture your consciousness oh that's a hard one about you know that's the thing or would it just be a replicate 
you know, and stuff like if they take boy slip, this, that, or whatever, you know, it's just like, it just becomes something else. It ain't me and I'm dead and I'm gone and goodbye. And it's, it, it, it is what it is. Okay. It's real hard to say. And stuff, you know, how, I guess, uh, you know, you, I got some weird doppelganger on the internet, but I'm over here at the astral and I'm living my life. Okay. It's hard to say, but if somebody did a full brain scan and actually willingly said, yeah, I want to live eternity as, you know, and say, yeah, ooh, immortality, that's the way to do it. Not the natural way. Okay. You know, that Jesus would, would maybe say or whatever. Yeah. Live a good life and stuff. You know, that's hard to say, but I can say no matter what. As the internet is going to get real, real bizarre, there's probably be a point that we are all going to have to pull out of social media. Facebook get weird. We're going to have to pull out. You know, there's there's a certain point you're all going to have to say, do I want this? Do I do I continue this because you know matrix or do I free my mind? Okay, because things are going to get very bizarre. And I know we love it because we want to, and I, when I did a poll in the group, I said, you know, you, you all know it's Matrix. Why do you stay on? You all know it's technically the Matrix. You all, you all know it's, it's, you know, it's, you know, Steve Jobs had the apple with a bite out of it. Okay. For a reason. Okay. You know, it is the tree of knowledge and good and evil in many fucking ways. Okay. And so it's like, and I'm not saying you, you, you completely, you know, disavow all the internet though there are those who have okay uh, so but you know as far as social media and certain things because there's a fragment let me go ahead and give an example we all know the the situation with pavlog's dog ring the bell and he salivates okay so let me give you an example of the mind and how powerful it is to manipulate it so I want you, and this was a real good thing because I was listening to this one um, lady. She was talking about meditation. So I want you to visualize a lemon in your hand. You know, a very big, juicy lemon. Okay? Then I want you to visualize that lemon is already peeled. It's already peeled. And then visualize it coming up to your mouth and taking the biggest bite out of that lemon you possibly can. Now visualize chewing that lemon and chewing it, the big chunks, maybe even tasting the seeds, the pulp and everything. And as I say that, I bet you salivated. It's like you're, you're visual, you know, you know, I'm just kind of, but I bet you salivated because that's, a, that's how the mind is powerful. I was able to get you to do that. Imagine the manipulation people can do. There is a manipulation to a degree. I don't have it on me at the moment, but say you have your phone and it goes ding and there's a certain little euphoric hit that you get. Oh, a message. Yes, we become Pavlong's dog in various ways. And, so, and some people it's like, you know, we, we already know how hard it is to put it down because we want to know what's going on with friends and things like that. But you get the ding. Oh, maybe it's ding, ding. Okay. I guess some of us, but see, some of us have an advantage that or other people do not. That, that like, I'm going to be 55 just in a couple, few weeks. I have an advantage, and some people my age have an advantage. We lived without this for 30 years, you know, 30 years minimum. Okay? Other people have grown up with it and always used it and don't know life beyond it. And that's what they're hoping for. But then there are those older people who were like, we know life beyond it. And it wasn't that fucking bad. <laughs> okay. It, it was a different age. You know, certain crimes didn't happen like they did before. You know, even, even when I lived in, you know, Phoenix, which was, you know, it had its shit, you know. But I, I noticed crime got worse with the internet. <laughs> it did. You know, we got Columbine. Let me give that example. And some of that stuff, you know, with those kids there was internet shit involved and it steadily progressed. We didn't have school shootings back in the day that progressed. Okay. And stuff. There's, there's a lot more stimulus video games, you know, there, there was violent things. Okay. With it. And I know there are a lot of people that play them. Please don't come at me. I know there's a lot of people play them. Like my son loves them and stuff like that. And he would never hurt a fly, but there are others who, you know, get weird. And also, Sat Guru says 70% of 
because he talked to some Google people, 70% of what is looked up is the naughty stuff. You know what I'm saying. Okay, 70% of Google searches are for that. And that has messed up the divine masculine massively. Massively. Women too, but especially the divine masculine is fucked up because of that. I so back in the day, it's like it, it, it can be very hard to go get one of those magazines. You, you know, the, the divine masculine young boys would sneak in their dad's stash, if dad even had a stash. But nowadays, it, oh, it's easy for the young men, even the young ones, to get to see stuff very easy if their parents don't put parental controls on it. It's very easy. And they, and they get beyond parental controls. You know the young people are fucking smart. Okay, all they have to do is YouTube to get past it. You know, there's all kinds of stuff they can do. Done, done. And they can access all that. And it's messed up the divine masculine mind when it comes to women and stuff. You know, just like I said, you know, the, the bite out of the apple, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What would put enmity between men and women? Oh, that's a huge one. And it's a prawn. Let me just say it that way. Oh, that's messed up a lot of men and women. It's ruined a lot of lives and ruined a lot of marriages. But men, the way they visualize see women, if they got addicted to that, okay, are all messed up now. So, and, there, and, and obviously the divine masculine is having a lot of problem. And this is where the divine feminine needs to come out and, and start trying to heal that divine masculine if, if humanly possible. Except there's a lot that are very messed up. And they don't need us to dominate them, put them down, and be too, too terribly hard on them. But they need the healing. They really do. You know, and stuff. But one thing, they need to stop looking at that. Uh, so that's one of the things. There's a lot of them that are addicted to it. And it's taking them down a very dark road. And stuff. It's a problem. So yes, uploading consciousness to the cloud. No, we don't want to do it. But I, I did have to sit there. You know, and think about it like, oh, God, what if a, a future self, you know, could it trap a soul? Could it trap a soul? I have to say, <clears throat> knowing what I know about consciousness, though I do not claim to know it all, uh, meditation consciousness and things like that, it, you know, I don't see why it couldn't trap a soul. That's one of the things. It's already got people hooked and plugged in and, and can be easily manipulated by media. You see how I was able to make you salivate. Just that. So imagine all other stimulus is coming at you. Okay. So as I kind of say that, guys, there is a point, you know, there's going to be a creepy AI, 3D consciousness, which we're still here, technically. And then there's 5D to be free of it. Okay. So there is a point where... You know, I know as it will become very unreal and you won't be able to tell fact from friction and everything like that. If people want to stay in a virtual reality, they're going to, you know, that's up to them. You know, just like I've already known, oh, they could deep fake me and, and, and I, AI could be giving them psychic readings. I am very well aware of that. But there is a point we may have to just abandon ship and stuff with social media because there will be no point who is real and who is not. We already deal with that, and stuff, but on a different level. And stuff that maybe the person being presented is something else behind the screen. Demons! And stuff I've said before, but now could be AI. And stuff, the, the manipulation is going to be fierce. And stuff, so this is kind of where we got to say, oh, that's, that's going to be bizarre. But the funny thing is, and I really do think it, is there are some that will be like, oh, that's okay. At least I'll have a relationship and it'll be somewhat intelligent. And there will be people that... You know, because I've known some people that don't want to get rid of Alexa. They're like, I, I kind of like having her talk to me. And I'm like, yeah, she listens. You know, things like that. So, guys, we can't boil the frog. You know what that is. The frog goes into the water. It's just boiled slowly, slowly. And it gets comfortable, though it's starting to get hot. And then over time, and then all of a sudden, it's cooked and it's done. Okay? So, we got to think very much you know, consciousness, the, you know, the soul. I said, we don't want to lose our soul. So really, let's keep an eye on it. I'm going to talk more about it because AI needs to be talked about. Okay? I said, remember what I said, battlefield of mind, the prize is the soul. Have a good one, folks.